Uh, thank you very much for coming down, and uh, I'd like to thank Spring Tide Collective for putting on this great event. Um, going back to 2002, through the build-up uh, report that you put out with mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Canada 25, um, you mentioned that there were, th essentially without going through the grocery lists of the subpoints, you mentioned that there were three main trends. Uh, you've already addressed uh, diversity. The other two were, I believe, density. Density and a sense of discovery. Yeah. Um, having already covered that, what mechanisms for the other two or ways that cities who ha that have been successful um, in promoting those, I guess, ideals or, or things, um, what, have, what has been successful? Uh, Basically. So briefly, um, on the density piece, if you really want to know more about that, 6 o'clock at the West in the Carmichael Lecture, that's what that's about. <laughs> um, try and keep all of these lectures uh, in order <laughs> while I'm here. Um, but very, very briefly, um, building up, that's what was the name of the book, but building up rather than out doesn't just mean building high rises everywhere. It means thoughtfully figuring out ways that people can live together in neighborhoods. And by the way, more people can live in those neighborhoods. Um, very, very, very briefly, you have to think about it in three ways. You have to think about your downtown core, your center city, which does mean high rise, high density living. You have to think about when you're building new suburban communities on the outskirts, that those communities are walkable, that they're mixed, that they're safe, that people don't need a car to get to the store to get a loaf of bread. Um, those things, and you can do very thoughtful things with urban design now, and the brand new suburbs that we're building now are very different than the ones we built 10 years ago. They look similar, but they're much more efficient uh, and sustainable financially, socially, and environmentally. Um, but I'll talk much more about that uh, in my next talk. As for discovery, a sense of discovery. You know, that really is about economic development and thinking about how we help cities be the hubs of entrepreneurship, innovation, new ideas. So I always say, and I said today at lunch, that people from across the country are always surprised when I point out to them that the oil sands are not, in fact, located in downtown Calgary, uh, that they're actually very, very, very far away. I can fly to Toronto in almost the same amount of time I can fly up to the oil sands mines. Canada's a very tall country. People forget that. Um, so then why are all those jobs and that innovation happening in downtown Calgary when it could be in Shanghai or Mumbai or Dubai or anywhere else that ends in I? Um, and the real reason is because you've created a hub where people want to work. That in downtown Calgary, you can walk around and see different people and different ideas at work. You know, And, and, and we know that this, this is very well understood in the literature that networks and clusters and hubs make a huge difference. So you have to figure out kind of where you're going to trade and what you're going to do. So here, I'll tell you an interesting story. I was in a barber shop this morning, Sailor Bupp's Barber Shop. He's very aggressive on Twitter. I had to go. <laughs> but it was fascinating because I was listening to him talk, and I was listening to everyone else in the place talk, and he was talking about his barber shop as a community hub. And he said, you know, just yesterday there was a guy in one chair who was looking for work and a guy in another chair who had a job, and, you know, we figured out that we matched the two of them together. And I was sitting there getting a shave, and the guy next to me was working as a medical researcher on Alzheimer's drugs um, in mice. And later this afternoon, I went to the new central library, and I eavesdrop a lot. And so I was eavesdropping and listening to the conversations that people were having, and I was realizing that these sorts of physical hubs make a big difference. And this is a city where, obviously, you have tons of post-secondary and incredibly educated population, and there's a real opportunity for innovation to happen here if you can break down those human barriers and getting people to talk to one another. Um, you know, the barber learning about the Alzheimer's research on the mice was totally interesting. But the question is, who was in the other chairs? And how are they listening? And how do we create these community hubs, whether it's a coffee shop like this, you know, or a barber shop, or a library, or a university? And how do we break down the barriers between different kinds of people to make sure that those brain power that we've got in this community can actually lead to the economic development that'll make a difference in the long term. You know, in Calgary, certainly it's resource-based. You know, a lot of it has to do with the oil industry. But that also means we have tons of engineers and scientists. It is the most educated city in Canada. I think Halifax is second. And, uh, and as a result, what do we do? How do we get those engineers talking to those artists, talking to those marketing people and those finance people and figure out how to build that more resilient economy that'll keep us going when we can't rely on the natural resource economy as much anymore? And we haven't quite figured it out yet, but I think we're asking all the right questions.